feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. Welcome back to another episode of The Shrimp Tank, coming to you virtually from Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. And today, we are not only in the Great White North, we're also up in Alaska. You're going to have to stay tuned to listen how that's happening. If you want to learn how to start, grow, or run a successful business, this right here, it's the podcast for you. It's where we say street smarts and book smarts collide. Hello again, everyone. I'm Dan Whedon, and my co-host today is the incomparable Phil Simchich. Our guests today are Sina and Rich Wheeler of Sina Wild Alaskan Fish. Rich and Sina are a third-generation fishing family, and they work hard to bring home the very best fish. Their goal with Sina Sea is to bring the consistent, premium quality that they get to enjoy direct to their customers something they just can't do anywhere else. Sina Sea are not only fishermen, they also run a small fisherman owned custom process facility in Cordova, Alaska, which is 60 mile, 60 North Seafoods, where they specialize in premium quality and traceability. You know what that means? It means it never leaves their hands. They have to com complete control of the entire process, just like maybe Phil and I do here today. We're going to learn a lot more. Welcome, Sina and Rich. We'll be with you in just a minute. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, everyone. iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and YouTube. I like to say we're ubiquitous. We come to you from about a dozen cities, including the mothership in Atlanta. Now, before we bring on Sina and Rich, Hello, Phil. Hello, Dan. How are you? I'm doing great. You know, in fact, so good. It, uh, people don't know this, but you and I got to see each other in person live for the first time in, I think, about three years. I mean, we see each other all the time on Zoom, but we were in the same place in Whistler, British Columbia last week. Yes, enjoying a variety of smoky cocktails. So it was a, yes. it was a great trip. Yeah, if you go to my YouTube channel, danweeden.tv, you can see one of those along with about 2,000 other people that viewed me drinking a smoky drink. You know what else we had up there? I had some great fish. I had some great fish and it made me think, Phil, that you know the fish I get at home, I'm very lucky. Barb's brother, David, is a, a retired Coast Guard, lives out in Port Angeles, and for those people that don't know where Port Angeles is, he's right out by the Dungeness Spit. And he goes out and he catches, and it's wild. It's not uh, it's not game farmed or anything like that. He goes out, physically catches the fish, and I get a whole bunch of it in my freezer, which I consistently eat. I don't fish myself, but I love to eat fish. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Phil, uh, because we're going to be talking a lot about fishing today, uh, are, are you a fisherman? Well, we're very landlocked here, uh, but fishing is quite popular even on the lake at Regina Beach where I go kayaking. But last week, being on in Vancouver after Whistler, we enjoyed some very nice salmon uh, with my daughter, and we're teaching her the number one thing is don't overcook salmon, but how does she want it? She wants it crispy. So uh, kids, right? What what can you do? But sooner or later, she'll she'll learn to eat salmon properly. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing before we bring on Rich and Cena, and my and Barb thinks I'm crazy. Everybody else does too. I don't care. She'll give it to. I love the skin, and I love the skin crispy. And and people think that everybody every I run into thinks I'm nuts. But I love it. In fact, Barb will get, get here. You want the skin? Yes, I want the skin. So uh, I do. In fact, I, I think what I just have to do now, I got to bring on Rich and Cena. I'm going to ask you this. For, first of all, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Rich is in Thanks. Alaska right now. Rich, thanks for piping in from north, uh, very north. Cena is over in eastern Washington. I'm just going to ask you this first. Am I the only guy, the only person who likes skin the salmon skin no that's a thing Sam, crispy yeah. salmon salmon skin is a thing and people love it so you're not the only one but you might be a little bit norwegian <laughs> rich you were going to say something too yeah i'd fight you for it i mean it's great i love salmon skin i love black cod skin um 
love to make my little sushi rolls out of it. So oh, my so little see, leftovers I'll, at the end of dinner. Yeah, it's awesome. You guys have made my day because now I can tell everybody, look, I'm talking to fish experts. And they said, not only am I not nuts, Rich was willing to fight me for the for yeah. the skin. So, yeah. you know, I, I know I've been on your website. We're going to talk a lot about that. I love Copper River salmon. That's something I cannot get from my 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 brother-in-law. So I, I know where I'm going to be getting it from here on in. Uh, Rich is up in Alaska for another a couple of days, I think, before coming home and, and getting seen, seen in the family. Talk to me or talk to us a little bit about how you got started in this business. Well, Rich has been fishing for over 20 years and he started on my dad's boat. So Rich is the son-in-law. My dad started, he was the son-in-law on my mom's dad's boat and he started fishing in Norway and immigrated. So we go back, We I think three generations is really the easy number. I've dug in a little bit, found at least five and then a really cool obituary talking about my grand, great grandfather in Norway learning to fish from his father. So in fact, we go way back into Norway generational. So fishing is just in our blood, I guess. <laughs> and so fish is super healthy for us, as we all know. How can the fishing industry at a, at a big picture high level compete with all the money behind beef? Um, oh, that's a really interesting question. I think that um, beef will never be salmon, you no. know, in terms of health, true, you know, the, the real health benefits, it just, you know, they could put a big campaign out, but they can't become salmon. So I think that there is just, you know, there's always a place for that lighter, fairer and healthier eating. To yeah. be. I don't yeah. think yeah. it's a competition. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I like saying it's things. I, uh, I don't think it's necessarily uh, competing, uh, but uh, complementing each other. I mean, I love good fish and I love the Copper River. Uh, I love all the salmon that comes from the Copper River, but what I really like also is a good steak. Uh, so it's just, you know, complimentary. Lots of room. Well, you know, speaking of the Copper River, now I, I don't, I know we're coming kind of based out of the Seattle, the Pacific Northwest. Uh, other people may be listening to us uh, who have, don't know what we're talking about with Copper River, but Copper River salmon uh, is is amazing. Phil, I don't know if you've ever had Copper River salmon. It he's shaking his head no. Uh, I've had whole I, food salmon. Yeah, no. Copper River salmon is something <laughs> special. Rich, would you share a little bit about the? It's it's. I don't want to say it's a mystique because it's just it's it's real the what copper river salmon is so the copper river salmon we're in the if you look at a chart of alaska we're in uh the prince william sound um if you look at a uh, kayak island uh, that jets out uh there in the gulf uh it's tucked away the delta is kind of tucked in behind uh be to the west of kayak island and then you have this massive delta that uh it's huge 70 some odd miles long and then you have this uh incredible um river system that uh, these fish run 300 miles up this you know just massive i think it's a 3,000 foot elevation change in this river so we're out there fishing for these fish out in uh and the out in the water out in the, the salt water and we're catching them before they're uh, the ferric contents are uh, used up going up this river. And so it's just an incredible uh, species. The fish looks different. It tastes different. Uh, when you fillet it, it, it's noticeably, it's just different. Uh, the texture uh, all the way down to, you know, the way that the fish smells. It's just a different animal. And uh, it's really a sought after. Is it, in, like is it in the, is it in the fat? Is it in the fatty? Is, it, is there something yeah. unique about because of where the Copper River is, Rich? Well, it's it's because of the, yes, it is because of the, the tumultuous. This river runs at, uh, like this year, we've had a tremendous amount of water coming through. So you're figuring a river, and I'm going to say that this river is probably running at 10 knots, if not more. I mean, it is a massive river that is really angry, that is running fast, uh, glacial fed. And these fish have to go up this river. And in order to do that, they have a large store of fats. And that's, we're catching them, you know, out at uh, 
uh, before they uh, head up the river. So their their fat stores are immense. This is it's noticeable when you cut this fish open. I can't even explain how much it is when you touch it. It's just all over your hands. It's just a really uh, beautiful, supple fish. So Phil, before you ask your question, I'm I'm going to just tell you when in our local market here in Paul's Bowl called Central Market, when the when the the signs come up, the Copper River salmon are coming in. Uh, people go nuts and and they're you, you pre-order them because they they run out. So. Um, anyway, I, I, like I said, I know where I'm getting my Copper River salmon moving forward, but Phil, I'm going to let you go to your next question. So uh, let's move from product to when I work with small business owners, I always like a, a tour of their plant or their facilities. Um, tell me about uh, A, your boat and B, your processing plant. Okay, so first I'll, I'll back up to when Stine and I started uh, CNC, we started out in a very, very small little uh, operation and we had all of our custom processing done uh, by the facility that we now uh, purchased. And so it, it started out very modest, very small um, and somewhat embarrassing on the size uh, and then also in that uh, how proud we are that it's the size that it is today. Um, Originally, uh, in my 25 years of commercial fishing, um, I, I longlined exclusively. That's all I did. And then the writing was on the wall that I needed to maybe do a little bit more uh, longlining. Halbert Black Cod was uh, kind of on the downward spiral at that time. Uh, and Cena and I had discussed taking it another step further. And uh, I bought into the Copper River fishery uh, along with my longlining. And then probably within, I think a couple of years, Cena, would, wouldn't you say that we kind of realized that we were sitting on something super special uh, and that we were leaving um, a lot of money on the table still. Um, we didn't realize how difficult and how challenging this business was going to be until we actually dove into it. But then um, I think by year three, we finally jumped in and started to custom uh, have our, our process, our fish custom processed and uh, went from there. Uh, my boat, my personal gill netter is uh, 32 feet by, uh, I have a beam of 12.5, um, really stable platform, uh, done an immense amount of work on it. Um, and it, it's a great family boat. Uh, part of the reason that I bought it was for the fact that when I'm out long lining, uh, fishermen often dream about fishing with their families. There's, we're gone for long periods of time and we want our families with us. Um, I probably stubbornly stuck to the boat that I have because I wanted my family with me desperately. And it, it might not be the best platform for how I want to fish today, but uh, when uh, I have my family aboard, it's super comfortable. We have a nice time and it's uh, super safe. So um, it, it's been a great thing. Now, going on to the next step of how our processor uh, came into our hands was uh, the people that were custom processing for us uh, came to me and said, uh, hey, would you be interested in uh, purchasing the facility? And uh, of course, uh, Cena and I being entrepreneurs at that time uh, took on the challenge and we went out and uh, collected some investors and, and a business partner and um, the rest has been history. I mean, it's been an immense amount of work. Right. Um, 60 North is um, super proud of it. Uh, it's something that I, I couldn't even describe on how much work it's been, but uh, probably uh, oftentimes um, I say this to people, it, it is the coolest job I've ever done in my life. Really uh, fortunate and very proud that I, I get to be a part of it. Well, 60 North is cool. That's the custom processing facility. And at the time, they were cutting our fish for us. And then, you know, when they, when they were gonna put it up, it was really cool they came to us because they knew they would probably be bought up by the big guys. And that's kind of what we have. Other than us in this community is you have the, the Trident and the, the, the big companies where the fish gets processed and right back out the door. And we're able to, we wouldn't have been able to get our fish cut by anybody. They just don't want to deal with people like us that want our fish cut our way and back and that. And so now we're also able to provide that for other people and cut subsistence fish. So it's really, we're doing it. We cut our fish for seen sea, but it's actually providing a huge um, benefit to the small fishing community and keeping fish local. So it's been really cool. 
it, it, it just really sounds like I hate to put, use this term, but it's it's an old school way of doing a, a and fishing has been around, you know, forever. It's, it sounds like a very old school, uh, but really cool way of delivering fish. As, as you said, in the as I said in the bio, it really never leaves your hands, does it? No, no, we're, we're vertically integrated all the way through. Even to the point where, you know, like uh, you go to uh, the CNC website where the cedar boxes that we, uh, you know, we move and we, I, you know, cut the damn tree down, uh, put it on the sawmill, mill it and plant it and surface it and, you know, uh, build the boxes and, you know, fill the jars. So I mean, we are involved all the way through It's a hand done product from, you know, start to finish. Well, something else that never leaves anybody's hands is uh, is is how we run this show. And as Phil knows, we got to pay the bills, so we're going to take a short break to hear from today's spotlight sponsor. And when we come back with our guests, Cena and Rich Wheeler, for hot or hot or not section of the show, Cena, get ready because I'm going to talk to you or I'm going to ask you about Ludafisk. Don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. And again, it's me uh, doing doing double duty for producer today. Would you like to grow your business, increase revenues, and raise profits? Who wouldn't? <laughs> Would more financing from your bank or help you grow? Who's guiding your succession plan? And would you like more control of your business so that you sleep better at night? These all sound like yeses. SME Business Wealth Builder works with business leaders and owners like you to help them grow their business and build their business wealth. For more information and to check out free resources, go to smewealthbuilder.com. Uh, Phil, back to All you. All right, welcome back to the Shrimp Tank where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm Phil Simchich. And our guests today are Sina and Rich Wheeler and Sina Sea Wild Alaskan Fish. First time I said that without practicing. And for our next, <laughs> next segment, Hot or Not. So Rich and Sina, I think you've, you've, you've at least heard or, or watched a couple of our shows. You know Hot or Not is where Phil and I pepper you with questions about business, about life, about fish. Uh, and then you're going to tell us whether it's hot or not, and then why or why not. I did a little research, Sina. I, I, I think I read correctly that you come from a Norwegian family. As you heard, I live in Palsbo. You mentioned I might be Nor. I'm not anywhere near Norwegian. The DNA says it's Scottish and Colombian, which is kind of a weird mix, but there's no <laughs> Norwegian. I have, on though many occasions, eaten lutefisk. I noticed that there was no lutefisk on, on any of the recipes or any of the fish. So Cena, hot or not, lutefisk? I'm gonna go not, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, I have not, I'm gonna be honest, I have not had lutefisk. I, I grew up e eating spigot chit that my, that my grandpa made. We, he salted his own cod, we had lefse, but we never had lutefisk. I've, I've had lef <laughs> I left is very good. And, and look, Rich, have you had lutefisk? Nope. Oh, well, I'm going to tell you, you come to Paul's bow. They know how to make lutefisk here. Uh, and if I it's not that. made well, it's, it's, it's not good. It's, 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 in fact, it's, it's very, very bad, but when made well, it's okay. So anyway, I just, I had to hear from a Norwegian about lutefisk. Um, so today there was a blog by a very popular marketing guru whose name rhymes with Seth Godin. And his blog today was about beef and the U.S. tax subsidization by every taxpayer of the entire beef industry. So my question for you is taxpayer subsidization of the beef industry, hot or not? Oh, of course it's hot. Hot. Uh, is it through corn by chance? Is that why it's subsidized? In, in, in part feed, in part land, um, in, yeah. in probably in part pricing, because I know that's what's happening here. Super, super interesting. Um, I'm not going to say that I know anything about it, but I, I, I could imagine it probably has to do with corn. Um, and the, the fact of it is, is we need protein. Um, you know, like we were talking earlier amongst this, uh, I, I don't think that necessarily fish 
uh, it, it, both beef and fish complement each other. There's room for both. And the politics of beef, I won't understand. <laughs> There's, it's huge. It's bigger than me, way, way bigger. So my next hot or not, and feel free both both to, to respond to it uh, because I think it's a really important topic. I, I'm going to guess it's hot, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Hot or not, sustainability and food. Definitely hot. <laughs> talk, talk about what that means because people see. I, I thought you. I thought you both might say that because I, 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 all you have to do is go to your website to to see how important it is to you. But but somebody watching or listening may not understand what what sustainability actually means when it comes to 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 food and especially in your industry. Yeah, I mean, I'll I'll jump in real quick. Um, sometimes fishermen get a you know a little bit of a bad rap, and people kind of assume that fishermen are out there trying to overfish and it might happen in some places, but in, in Alaska, in American red, you know, uh, regulated fisheries, you have fishing families like us. And when you have generational fishing families, we want the fish to be there. We want to do this for generations and we have to have the fish coming back. And so, whereas it might be hard for people to get you know, they have this funny stereotype about fishermen. It's very logical for fishermen to be very sustainably minded and very connected with how are the fish doing, how are the stocks doing, and fishing for the next generation. So what that means for fishermen is, and this is how it's regulated in, in Alaska, of course, for all fisheries, is they're managing for the future. So we aren't, so for salmon, for example, it's spawning upriver. They are counting literal fish, you know, millions of fish going by, and we don't fish until next year's fish have basically they're on target numbers for next year to spawn and create um, the next generation of fish. So for fishermen, that means just totally getting it that that's how it's done, and we fish off of the remaining fish. So that's what. I know the term sustainability can get thrown away around and mean a lot of different things. And that's what it means in fishing, making sure that there's fish for the next generations. Um, when you expanded, you were able to pursue some opportunities. I, I guess, were these on your radar at all? So my question is, having a business plan to be able to respond to opportunities, hot or not? Hot. And I'm going to say no, it was not on our radar. Uh, we were so, when we started seeing the sea, uh, first, you know, going back to being a fisherman, uh, it was never on my radar to be a processor. It, you know, 25 years ago, uh, it, absolutely not. Uh, direct marketing, um, yes, I think that it was something that we had considered. And in, in here again, uh, being a fisherman, it's, you know, nothing more satisfying than, you know, selling your own catch. It's one of these things that we often dream about and talk about. Uh, to the level of what we have gone to, uh, nowhere in my radar at all. Um, the business plan that we developed after the opportunity appeared it's, itself was, um, you know, I think pretty comprehensive. But here again, uh, throw the business plan out the window because the whole industry has changed in the last five years. It's been really, really interesting. Uh, the whole world has changed. And now we're, you know, I, I think that we're in a really good position um, because of the hard work that Cena has done with, you know, Cena C and, and uh, making us relevant in online sales. Well, and just to kind of jump off of that, you know, we purchased the processing facility and then two years later, COVID happened and it, Copper River was the first fishery to open in, in the, on the world. I mean, in the spring, it's the first fishery and, you know, everything was up in the air and it turned out, you know, our model of Cena C where we sell six ounce portions cut and individually vacuum sealed directly to the consumer and we ship to their door. It turned out that was a really good model to have figured out. We had already figured that out and we were already doing it. So whereas a lot of people were pivoting, we got to just lean into what we'd already gotten really good at. And so that turned out to be one of those things where, you know, we had already been jumped on the right ship, which was pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, and, and uh, to borrow a term that one of my coworkers uses is a COVID success story. So, you know, pretty, pretty neat. Awesome. Yeah. So I, I, this is a good segue because I think we all figured out what Rich does. 
he's he's catching <laughs> fish. Seen, I'd like to hear a little bit more about. I mean, this has your name on it. I, I want to hear a little bit more about what you're doing, and and I guess maybe throw into it. I I see a great picture of you and your uh, three children, and and Rich talked about family. Uh, how does uh, you know what is it that 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 your main role at the company is besides having the name and how are you integrating your kids in all of this? Okay, that's a big question, but I'll, I will start with, <laughs> I have a master's degree in um, fishery food science and I studied onboard handling techniques, how it relates to sensory and also our eating quality and then also um, quantifying omega-3s. So I, I'm dug deep in fish and what that means is back when Rich was just fishing is a lot of me going, well, you should be doing this and you should be doing that. And like Rich is talking about investments in his refrigerated seawater stuff. So we had put in a lot of work just based on our own knowledge and pride to, we started from a position of, we have the very best fish. We know that we're catching it and then we're handling it. We're catching the best fish in the world and then we're handling it the best way possible. So that's just where we're starting with and kind of why it's like Rich is saying, it's so satisfying to get that directly to customers and say, look, here's what we're doing. It's really cool. So that's kind of, um, other than just tell, you know, in Rich's ear on how, <laughs> you know, just being really excited about how we're handling it, how we're taking care of it. We've also, the way we talk about it, I grew up, like I had said, you know, my dad was a fisherman. I grew up on, I fished on his boats in the summers. And the way I say it is Rich isn't just a fisherman, we're a fishing family. So it's an entire lifestyle and we raise the kids that way. And so it's important to us to get up to Alaska. We go out on the boat, like Rich had mentioned, the boats aren't huge. 32 foot boat is not huge. It's one or two guys usually. Most people don't have their families because they can't, there's no bunks. Um, they, there's two bunks and that's it. And we happen to have a, a bigger berth, a little bit of a bigger space. So we've had the kids up. We have a picture of our youngest nine months old, sort of strapped into the baby seat on the table and floating behind is an iceberg. <laughs> so they've been committed mm -hmm. and we've had them up for, um, two weeks at the littlest. And, you know, we had them up for eight weeks at a time and they've gone up to Alaska every summer and they, they're a big part of it. And that's really cool. They come out on the boat, they live on the boat. We all fish together um, when we can. And now we have the processing facility. So our son is now 17 or he was 16 this summer. He get off, get off the plane and he went straight in and got to work shoveling ice. I mean, he knows what to do. And when you're in Alaska in the summer, you work. <laughs> Everybody is there to work 20 hours a day and the kids know exactly. They just get right into that flow. You're there to work. And then what's cool is we've done a lot of um, farmer's markets in the state of Washington. So then the kids would come home with me and they'd be out at the farmer's market selling the fish. And you can't believe the reaction when you have people come up to the booth and then you know, uh, my son is sitting there or my, or our daughters are sitting there and they, they ask about it and they go, well, you know, I probably caught this fish and this is how we do it. And this is what's done. And when they hear a 10 year old kid explain how they caught that fish up in Alaska, that the, they're pretty much like, take my money and give me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really fun to keep them super involved, but to answer the question of what I do is I run the, the background. So I, I run the website. I, um, it turns out I write a lot. So I write a newsletter. I write everything on the site. I write blog posts and, um, and I didn't know that's what being in business would mean, but when you're a small business person, especially you have a website, you're a writer. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I do. Yeah. And Phil, before you asked your question, uh, you mentioned a newsletter. We'll maybe hear more about it. I'm assuming you can go to the website and you can sign up for that newsletter and you're going to get a lot of cool, cool information about what you're doing and recipes and things like that. Is that correct? 
Yeah, we got, that's a really fun place where we like to interact with our customers and we get a lot of great feedback, you know, that they, they're enjoying it. And I like hearing about the lifestyle, but we, yeah, we talk about everything from you'll know what's in season and why um, to recipes and how to cook it. So uh, that, that's a fun place. Uh, so I'm Ukrainian and we would have the 12 meatless dishes on Christmas Eve and I'm looking on your website, you have the Christmas Eve seven fishes feast. Tell me about that. Um, that is, I was working with um, um, Instagram influencer and they were creating that and I was really intrigued. It's um, Italian. And so ah. it's been a really fun way, you know, I, I grew up um, Norwegian well my grandpa was Norwegian my grandma's Swedish so you grow up a certain way but it's been really fun to kind of expand our horizons and learn about how other people eat fish and there's a lot of traditions around fish and fish Fridays we had fish every day <laughs> 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 but I've been kind of you know enjoying leaning into uh, learning about other cultures and and then kind of posting about how they're eating fish so that's been kind of fun but that's, uh, yeah, I think it's Italian. Well, uh, I can't believe that we are swimming along as quickly as we are. That's my small attempt at humor. We're swimming along as fast as, uh, as fast as we are. Like, it's hard to believe. We're gonna have to take our second short break to hear from our sponsors. And when we come back with our guests, Cena and Rich Walker, for our famous play, the fifth section of the show, I wanna ask Rich a question. Actually, I'm gonna ask them both, but Rich, be ready, you're up first. We're going to find out about, um, well, you know what? I'm just going to tell you later. Everybody's going to have to wait. Stick around. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. And Plead the Fifth is brought to you by our corporate sponsors, Idea Life 360, Cornerstone Financial, First Underwriters Insurance, Kitsap Sun Newspaper, BC Fitness Studio, and Upstart Group. Please visit our website at www.shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle to learn more about these terrific companies. Now back to the show. All right. Welcome back to the Shrimp Tank, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound area and beyond. I am co-host Phil Simchich. Our guests today are Sina and Rich Wheeler from Sina Sea Wild Alaskan Fish. And for our next segment, Plead the Fifth. And we're going to we're going to turn up the heat on plead the fifth, uh, maybe a couple tougher questions. You can plead the fifth, but only once. And I haven't made a decision if you get to each get a, a plead the fifth or if you have to do it together, I'll I'll make up my mind as we go along. But this is going to be the same question for both of you. But I'm going to start with Rich. Uh, you know, I, I both Phil and I actually know what it's like to have uh, uh, a family business and spouses working together. Uh, Rich, I'm going to start with you. What's the one thing that Cena would say under oath that you <laughs> could improve upon in, in the business as in your role? What could you do better according to Cena? Communication. <laughs> okay, this is the time you could elaborate on that communication. Tell us more. <laughs> Tell us more. Uh, for for example, right. you, you fell for it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, just you know, just uh, one. Uh, there, there's a lot that I do here up in Alaska that uh, oftentimes I don't communicate properly. That you know, I have a shipment coming down. We had an incident this morning that I have a customer that uh, I sent down, uh, unknowing to Cena, a bunch of boxes of fish for this customer that needs to go with the shipment uh, back to New Mexico. Uh, how is she supposed to know? Uh, because I didn't put it on the manifest or uh, in an email. So there was a you know a, a slight bit of confusion there for about 15 seconds, and then we got through it and went on to the next one but it, it's it's constant you know uh my brain uh works slightly different than cena's um and um so there's times that i just need to maybe slow down and uh take a breath and understand that um, words are better than uh just grunts <laughs> and uh, so i i think that would you agree with that cena hundred percent. Okay. That's, yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I, I, I saw the big smile. If you're, if you're listening, you couldn't see the big smile, but Sasina, so time to stop smiling. It's your turn. What would Rich under oath say? I know Cena could be better at. 
this is a direct rich quote haul ass <laughs> be faster at everything <laughs> everything including decision making just you know just like he said slow down and use words I, his to me would be speed up <laughs> and just do it love it love it yeah and so for for both of you what's the best book or or podcast uh, that you've read or or follow that helps stimulate your brain and gives you ideas I, i'm going to jump in real quick and, and cena is really responsible for a lot of where i am at today you know whether it uh being um i've taken a lot of her advice uh I've put some investment into what i'm doing you know personally and whether it's a book that she suggested or something like that, I listen to a lot of audiobooks when I'm fishing uh, or working during the winter time or doing you know odd things. And um, I'd probably have to say uh, Rocket Fuel would be one of them that really stands out uh, really well with um, with where I am today. Uh, my business partner and I, uh, he, I am the CEO. He is the uh, S, uh, CFO. And, uh, you know, my job is to prove it to him. Uh, here's my kooky idea. And he says, prove it to me. He's, you know, he's, he thinks a lot like Cena does. And so um, we, you know, that, that to me, that's been probably the, one of the greatest books. Um, the other one is, what's the name of that book that uh, we just read, Cena, about the, the Carnegie um, talking to people? And oh, um, how to influence. How to people. win friends and influence people. Yeah, great book. Wonderful, um, and I, I took a lot away from that too. And uh, I actually had our entire staff read it this year. Um, I don't know if it worked for everybody, but I've really taken a lot of it to heart. And then there's the getting to neutral we use a lot. Um, what's the name of uh, takes what it takes? Yeah. Um, what what I love is Rich and I have a shared Audible account, and so um, either one of us could download a book on tape which we do all the time. And then if we love it, we'll say, oh, check this one out or check that one out. And so we can read them or listen independently. But if one of us really likes one, the other one will listen and then we can talk about it and use the vocabulary in our conversations. And especially being, you know, we, we live together six months out of the year. He's in Alaska six months. So having that um, thing that we do together that can, you know, together but separate, it, it's really actually very cool. So I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get a little meatier here, a little juicier. Uh, you you both been eating fish all your life. I'm interested from both of you, and you can be as specific as you'd like, or I guess uh, you know unspecific. But we'll we'll find out. Where have you had the best and worst fish you've ever eaten? The best and worst fish you've ever eaten are from where? Oh, I know right off the bat. Uh, the best fish, this is obvious, the best fish we ever eat is always on Rich's boat. And obviously he's just caught the fish and everybody knows fresh fish, but I'm telling you, it's the salt in the air. It's the tiny little barbecue, but it is the best fish every single time. It's incredible. Yeah. And every so, single time. Every, every, every time. yeah. It, it, and it, I, we haven't been able to quite quantify why, but I think it, it is obviously the fish, but it might be the stupid little barbecue. So we will take the port, our portions. They are cut and frozen from the at the processing facility. We will take it there and carry them to the boat and cook it on the boat. And it's incredible. <laughs> we can't even replicate it back. I mean, it's just so unbelievable. Like uh, I think that actually, when I was home this summer, I did buy uh, one of these stupid little barbecues and got pretty close to replicating it, it but it, it's just this barbecue just does something incredible it's not fancy it's so tiny. i'm 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 going and i completely believe you and i'm going to ask the question a different way people are on vacation somewhere they don't have your fish handy where's the best place and worst place to get fish well, Seattle would be uh, probably the best place to get fish. I mean, okay. we are so salmon rich. Uh, people know how to cook salmon in Seattle. Uh, and there's the, the beauty of uh, also what we get to do uh, participating in 60 North is we have a, a huge media tour that comes through. 
with our marketing association. Um, and there is so much interest. These people come out here and, and handle this, this beautiful fish and take it. And then we ask them to cook it for a demonstration. And uh, New York, Chicago is another great place that you know, we see a lot of our fish being uh, consumed at. Um, the worst well, place, I don't even know. I, I don't even know if I would begin to, um, I've been in Mexico and had unbelievable fish also. Uh, I'd say so, the best place is by an ocean. <laughs> and, uh, and the worst place might be inland. I mean, um, if you're eating wild, know. you know, the worst might be farm fish. I mean, is that bad to say? <laughs> no, that's what I've been waiting for. No, I love yeah. that. I, I love that answer. <laughs> Eat wild fish because the farm, yes, I want it. It's not bad to say. It's exactly what I was, I was thinking you might. Uh, that's what our daughter was telling us last week when we were buying salmon in Vancouver is like, don't buy farm fish. And, and so she's, um, she's in tune with that. So that's, that's pretty good to know. Um, yeah. My, my question, you're apart for six months of the year. How do you deal with that? It's, uh, we've been doing it long enough that we, it, it's, it's hard. It's, <laughs> challenging at times um and you know it, it it doesn't actually seem to be getting any easier i i and i think that you know uh, the truth of it is is we have three kids um uh, i really enjoy cena uh i like my kids and uh, i like to be around my kids uh it's what i found to be quite honest is when they come up here and work during the summertime with me and when they leave it's about the worst thing ever because it sucks. And when they leave, I'm just like, I think this last time I got pretty choked up and my kids are all, you know, trying to get me to cry and all this stuff. And I'm just like, I almost lost it right there. It was just, uh, it's really challenging. Uh, but when I'm home, I'm home too. And I, I spend, you know, uh, we, we say everything's divided up by six months as my career is getting longer. I am getting to be home more, but, um, this project that we're on right now takes a lot of my time. So it's, I'm, when I am home, I did get to come home. I think twice this summer, uh, I was pretty involved and, in, you know, I'm still working. I'm, I didn't get to like not bring my computer out and I didn't get to not pick my phone up. Um, so there are a lot of challenges as far as our marriage are concerned with this, but um, we're both in this to win this. Uh, we didn't, just decide this one day. Uh, this has been a choice that we've made. You know, uh, we've been married for 22 years and this is what we decided to do. So it's, um, but you know, we work through it. See Sina, you? I agree. I mean, one of the, one of my, my mantra during the hardest parts is, you know, this is our choice. We went into this knowing, I went into it knowing full well my dad fished and was gone. So, you know, it didn't happen to us. It's a lifestyle choice and it's important to remember in those times. But I would say, I would also say with Rich, same thing. It's really interesting, but every year is a new challenge and, you know, you, you get through one and there's another one and it's just, that's life. And that's life for people that don't leave too. It, that's how it goes. It was like, I remember feeling so sorry for myself when I was pregnant with our first, you know, Oh, Rich is gone. And then the next year I'm like, oh wait no this is way harder I have an infant and then the next year, time it's like wait now I'm pregnant and I have an infant like <laughs> what was I complaining about back when I was just pregnant <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> yeah. so there's just this constant evolution and you're always up leveling awesome Stephen and Rich thank you so much for being our guests here on the shrimp tank for our listeners that want to get in touch with you, learn more about your company and buy really good fish, how can they get more information? Oh, definitely go to the website, um, cnasea.com and get on our list. Our, uh, like we talked about our email list, it's just a really fun place to learn about us, what we're doing and just kind of jump in and hear about the lifestyle. And, and download some great recipes too. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So everyone, make sure you check out all the replays on shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle and wherever you get your podcasts, such as iHeart, Apple, or Google. Please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Well, 
First of all, Rich and Cena, thank you very much. Rich, safe travels home. Uh, Cena, I will be jumping on the newsletter. And if I don't get the fish from my brother-in-law, I'm going to get it from, from you. I'm excited uh, to have met you and learn more. Phil, as always, good to see you. It was great to see you in person last week. And we'll see you next month back on the show. Everybody else. Uh, do exactly what Phil said. Jump on our Facebook page, like us, because you can you can watch this live stream here. You can get a lot of information about all of our shows. Uh, we do a show every Wednesday, and our next show will be Wednesday, September 28th at noon. Our guest will be Jason Scott from 120 VC Holdings. Uh, my co-host that week will be Michelle Baumberger. So listen, in the meantime... Uh, be well or be safe, be well, be prosperous, and darn it, eat a lot of wild fish. Uh, because until next week, the shrimp is back in the tank. So long. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small